Here we are, another episode, Basic Bogey's podcast. Choo-choo. As of this week, the Olympics are officially underway. We've got a lot of athletes over in Paris representing America. Mm-hmm. It's always cool when the Olympics come around. Uh, Summer Olympics are they're not bad. I'm more of a Winter Olympics guy. Really? But... I actually, the Summer Olympics are one of my favorite sporting events of the entire, uh, like, just sporting community. I love that. I love watching, you know... Lithuanian plumbers uh, try to guard like LeBron. Yeah, I'm like this is absolutely, uh, and it's one of the, my, my favorite things. And even like the baseball, you know, you go watch, you get a bunch of college kids going up against like the Korean baseball all stars. Yeah, 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 fucking awesome. Love it. Big fan, big fan. But yeah, it's the Olympics. Like I said, we all those athletes over there representing the USA. And today we have a special guest that represented the USA at the U.S. Adaptive Open, Ricky Riley. Welcome back to the pod. What a guy! So what a pumped. guy! So pumped, boys! Hell yeah! Here's a here. I cheers think to just the, a cheers. Uh, to, cheers to the Rick Meister right off the rip. There we are. Try to get it through the screen. Nailed it. Look at that. Boom! What a week! <laughs> what a week for the guy. I don't know if you guys do. You, do you turn your tabs? Tournament tabs? I don't. I used to in college, but I don't anymore. I think that is a big college thing. I just never, it is a big I college thing because I'm almost. It. 60 i look great for my age nowadays so um so i mean yeah let's talk about it i mean one of the big things i know that we wanted to hit on before um well actually you know let's just kind of give us the the preference of like how it started what happened when you got there because then we got some questions to lead in kind of like how your rounds went and stuff sure so um got there friday night uh we we got in pretty late um on friday so we uh we ordered some Mexican food and got to the hotel and um it was the uh, Wichita Marriott and that was the discounted like block hotel that they supplied for us mm-hmm. and um so a lot of players stayed there we didn't we didn't see any that night which was probably good for my nerves because um I was you know I was uh, pretty on guard and I was tired and whatever I just kind of wanted to wait till in the morning to start any festivities or anything. So uh, I got there and got some good rest and then woke up Saturday and um, <clears throat> it was uh, practice round number one and uh, just played with some fabulous people in, in the practice round and um, got to uh, meet, meet some great people, get to kind of get the lay of the land. And to be honest with you, the morning of that practice round was the least nervous I had been in a week. Um, because nice, because nice. I just, I finally was there. Um, the clubs were there. I was there. I was healthy. I was feeling good. Um, and, and I was doing what I know I can do best, which is golf. You right? kind of, are you one of those guys? Are you, sorry. When you're one of those guys that like, you know, you get all this anticipation, you got all about like the what ifs and you're going through all that kind of stuff and your game plan. Are you, are you one of those guys where you just show up and you're like, oh, we're here. I'm chill now. Like everything's fine. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah. Spot on. So I was, uh, you know, for since I think May 7th, it was right. The, the mm-hmm. qualifier ever since, ever since then, you know, every, every day was a little bit closer to the main event and. You know, I would go out to my home course or I'd go out to other courses and in preparation of, you know, leaving for Kansas. And and I'll tell you, like, last week um, was probably one of the hardest weeks I've had as an athlete um, just due to, like, to be honest with you, I was in a little bit of a slump last week. Um, I, was, I was trying to play a lot but not too much because – you know, I was, I didn't want to kind of tire myself out too much, but I wasn't playing well, which led to me waking up in the morning and being like, well, we got to go figure this out. Right. right. Um, yeah. and then I go to choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'd go to work and then literally from seven to three every day, I just, you know, in the back of my mind, I, I, I had this and, um, it's something that, you know, I've never really done before with, uh, traveling out so far and playing in such a individually based important tournament right so um Mm -hmm. it was truly the first practice round day was truly the best i had felt mentally in in a week or two and um it was it was just great to be there and great to be swinging a club so um play a full 18 on the first day 
and it was just a spectacular course. I was just almost emotional to know that we'd, you know, be playing this gorgeous course for the next, you know, at that time, hopefully five days had we, you know, if we make the cut, that is. And, um, so, I mean, just, you walk in and you get treated like royalty. Um, we walked into a player hospitality tent that they had literally just built just for this event. Um, they, they built other tents as well and medical tents and all that stuff. And like truly USGA did an absolutely remarkable job in treating us just like, you know, if, if Scotty Shuffler walked into that tent. So, um, you know, we, we sit down, we get our picture taken and then we kind of walk around the player hospitality, hospitality tent, um, you know, to sign flags and then um, to get our goodie bag and to then get our player information. And I got this um, little belt or hat clip um, that would kind of get me into everything for the rest of the week. Um, I mean, thankfully, they look at me and there's no question that I'm an adaptive golfer, but <laughs> you know, it kind of helps a little bit in that regard. But it, you know, your uh, your grounds, your grounds, maintenance people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your work, your work here. Um, so it was, um, it, you know, like literally, I I never kind of felt the way I did um, on um, what was that Saturday, um, because that was my first experience with, you know, we made it, we're here, let's do this, right? So played a full eighteen um, Saturday night, got some good dinner. Um, it was just my dad and I still, um, on Saturday and then Sunday, my stepmom flew in, uh, directly to Wichita. Um, and my mom flew with her friend to Kansas city. Um, so they spent a Sunday night in Kansas city and then, um, flew in or sorry, drove in to Wichita Monday morning, the day of Mm -hmm. the first competition. So it was a little bit of a grind for my mom and her friend who, I'm blessed to have had both of them there and I'm blessed to have my stepmom and my, you know, dad with me and stuff. So I had the full family and, um, you know, it, it was truly remarkable. Sunday was a kind of a more chill practice day. Um, so let me, let me tell you this. So, um, and, and this is in no complaints to the USGA or anything like truly that these were volunteers um, great people. Literally, Sand Creek Station could not have put together a more welcoming and excited group of volunteers, but it's kind of funny. So, I get there and the guy looks at me and this is the on the range for the first day, right, of practice. First practice day. And he goes and he said something. And I thought he said, like, something about you're going to hit balls. I'm like, yeah. Like, I'm on the fucking range. You know what I mean? Like, isn't that what we do? And because what you would what you would do is there's a tent in front of the range and you tell them who you are and then how like do you want to hit Pro V ones, do you want to hit Pro V one X's and they grab your name plate and they get you set up. So all of a sudden the guy comes and it's with a different last name. And I'm like, No. And it was Boker, right? So it was one of the other obviously one of the other short stature players because obviously we look identical and um so i'm like riley riley like i'm ricky riley oh oh, okay like totally ignores me but realizes what i'm saying comes back with another wrong name of a short stature player like dude there's like four four or five of you five of us and so i'm like dude look, look at me in the eyes i promise you we don't all look alike so looking back at it he what he was saying to me when he first saw me was you're coming back to hit more balls. And I just like totally ignored it. I'm like, oh oh, yeah, fair. I I don't know. And so, so, and then I'm walking off the range, right? And uh, the guy comes up to me, he goes, did you get your water, Mr. Borkman? I'm like, dude, if you just (laughs) took a second to look us in the eyes, man, you'd realize we don't all look alike. I'm like, uh, Joaquin Borkman, man, he's from Sweden. I'm like, if I look Swedish, man, like, I know you can't really tell, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I Jesus, look, dude. I look Swedish. I, I, I know, exactly. But that's um, <laughs> that's the only thing that was different for us than any other impairment category, because obviously, I guess, 
all dwarfs look alike. So it was, um, but it was truly, truly awesome for the uh, practice rounds and the the staff treated us so great and they were all volunteers. Like they literally volunteered That's their really time nice. and you would have thought they've worked at this course for like years and um, truly it, the practice rounds were great. Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.